On a summer's day in early August 2022, a group of curious young teenagers made a decision that would change their lives forever. At just 14 years old, Mackenzie Croxford Cook and his friends found themselves looking for a thrill, sneaking into an amusement park before it opened to the public. But their innocent escapade would take a tragic turn. Mackenzie, the most adventurous of the group, met a cruel fate that morning. His life, so full of promise, was abruptly cut short in an accident that got him trapped in between the moving parts of the body count ride, crushing him to death. But what happened that fateful day? What went wrong? Could he have been saved? And who is to blame? This is the tragic tale of the body count accident that took a young boy away from this world. Mackenzie lived in the quiet town of Deal, Kent. He was known for his playful and friendly spirit. The boy was a cherished part of his circle of friends. Their bond was built on shared adventures and youthful curiosity, a bond that would be put to a devastating test early in August. As dawn broke on August 3, 2022, Mackenzie and his friends embarked on what they believed would be an exciting adventure. Their destination? The Forest Amusements Family Fun Fair in Pencester Gardens, Dover. They met three female friends at the fairground and started their early morning adventure together. The fun fair, usually buzzing with families and eager children, had yet to open to the public. These teenagers were not disturbed by the quietness of the morning, the unavailability of supervision, or even an unfortunate incident happening. Their minds were set on the exciting adventure and thrill waiting for them. They quietly slipped into the park, ready to begin their summer adventure. They went around the park and paid a visit to almost all the rides in existence. After exploring the still silent park and playing on the dodgems and trampolines, their attention was drawn to a towering machine. The ride was called Body Count. It was a superstar ride known for its adrenaline-inducing spins and dips. Resembling a giant wheel with multiple arms, each arm held a four-seat gondola. Once in motion, the Body Count spun, lifting its gondolas high into the air and dipping them back down in a mesmerizing pattern. Its reputation for exciting highs and thrilling lows made it a favorite among fairground visitors. The ride was designed to move freely, even without power, for safety during operation. At that quiet hour, with the fun fair yet to wake up to its busy daily schedule, the ride sat still, its gondolas empty. But the body count was an irresistible temptation for the adventurous teenagers. Little did they know that their morning adventure was about to take a tragic turn. With their hearts pounding in excitement, the teenagers pushed the ride to get it moving. Full of life and excitement, Mackenzie climbed to the top of the still ride. It was an idea that, to the young group, seemed exciting and a little rebellious. The fear of falling wasn't on their minds. They only wanted to be in the moment and exist in the moment. Suddenly, Mackenzie decided to climb, as sitting wasn't enough for him. But as Mackenzie began his ascent, he found himself caught between a support beam and the arm of a chair. The teenager's excitement turned into terror as Mackenzie screamed in fear and pain. They tried to push the ride in the opposite direction to free their friend, but the ride wouldn't budge. One of the boys called the emergency services, but as they waited for help, a chilling sight met their eyes. Mackenzie was not moving, and his skin had taken on a purple hue. The teenagers couldn't believe their eyes. The one friend they came with whose laughter towered above everyone else's was deathly still. The boy bent over Mackenzie, told him he loved him, and kissed him on the forehead. By the time the emergency services arrived and the ride was finally stopped, it was too late. A spokesperson for Southeast Coast Ambulance Service said, sadly, a teenage boy was pronounced as deceased at the scene. The emergency workers recorded Mackenzie's death at 8 a.m. The report showed that the ride had spun so that Mackenzie was trapped and his chest was crushed, causing the fatal injuries. This tragic event is a reminder of the importance of safety measures, even when a fun fair is closed. It brings to light questions about security measures and whether they should be in place outside of operating hours to safeguard the equipment and any person who might find their way in. As Mackenzie's story unfolds, it serves as a heartbreaking reminder of how a fun day can quickly turn into a day of sorrow. The news of Mackenzie's tragic accident quickly spread, shaking the town of Dover. Parents held their children tighter, and kids played a bit more cautiously. The laughter at the funfair was replaced with a somber silence. An investigation began to find out how a day of play could end so horribly. 
and how darkness replaced the light in the minds of McNeese's loved ones. The report showed that Mackenzie's injuries were severe. His liver and spleen had burst from the crushing force of the ride. It was a sad day when everyone learned the extent of his injuries, a stark reminder of how quickly things can turn bad. Questions began to arise about the safety of the funfair when it was closed. Maria Forrest, the person in charge of the funfair, explained that while there was security during open hours, there wasn't any after closing. This was a big concern. Could something have been done to prevent the kids from entering? Could Mackenzie's death have been avoided? Luke Shufflebottom, who operated the body count ride, spoke about how the ride was built to move freely, even without power. This was for safety reasons, in case the ride needed to be moved during emergencies. But in all his years of running the ride, he'd never heard of anything like this happening nor seen it. The judge ruled Mackenzie's death as death by misadventure. Death by misadventure meant that Mackenzie's choice to climb the ride, which was risky, led to the accident. This statement stirred up a lot of feelings. Some people agreed, while others felt the funfair should have done more to keep the area safe when it was closed. Talk started about improving security at the funfair, even when closed. The aim was to protect the funfair equipment and any adventurous soul who might sneak in. The sad truth is that the changes came too late for Mackenzie. However, there is still a chance that we can learn from this and prevent similar tragedies in the future. However, the organizers of the fair shifted blame and responsibility from their hands to poor Mackenzie. They argued that in Dover City, security at amusement parks was effective only when the parks were open, not closed. However, it took a lot of convincing before Roger Walton, the strategic director of operations and commercial at Dover District Council, was convinced that the funfair organizers had a role to play in Mackenzie's death. Mackenzie's story is a sad one, but it's also a powerful reminder of the importance of safety and the risks of adventure. His story spread far and wide, sparking big changes. The government felt the ripples of the tragedy, and they decided to take action. They didn't want another young life lost in such a heartbreaking way, so they decided to tighten the rules around amusement parks. The leaders set new rules, they decided that amusement parks needed to be checked more often to ensure everything was safe. Inspectors would now visit more frequently, examining every ride closely, from the big roller coasters down to the simple spinning teacups. Their careful eyes would check each part, ensuring every ride was in top condition and safe for all the thrill seekers. Along with this, stricter rules were put in place. Parks would need to be fully secured, even when closed. A locked gate wouldn't be enough anymore. Security guards would now watch the parks at all hours, ensuring no one could sneak in for a late-night ride. Meanwhile, back at the funfair, changes were happening too. Park officials made the tough decision to take down the body count ride. Its bright lights and fast spins were a central part of the park for years, but after the accident, things were different. People looked at the ride and saw a tragic memory, not a fun thrill. So it was taken apart piece by piece until nothing was left a sad but necessary move to help the community heal. Though Mackenzie's death was a heartbreak that no one could forget, these changes had a positive impact. With the new rules and the careful eyes of the inspectors, amusement parks became safer. The hope was that no other child would face the same fate as Mackenzie. And that is a very important lesson from this sad story. The importance of safety, care, and rules, even in the pursuit of fun and adventure.